Alright, time for a build that can do it all, and I do mean that literally. We have permanent quickness and increased movement speed, which will be unaffected by combat, enough burst damage to take down regular enemies with one or two hits, as well as enough sustained damage to solo any high health mob, and so much healing that soloing champions will soon become an afterthought, as you'll be passively regaining 7.5% of your total HP every single second. And when you're playing with other people, this build will also grant them almost every important boon. Which means that in meta events you are contributing by simply being there. Anyway, let's take a look at our traits and start with Invocation, which is all about having permanent fury and will grant us 10% extra strike damage, 25% extra critical hit chance on top of the 50% the boon is providing and periodically pulls might to top it all off. And as if that wasn't enough, we gain another 10% damage increase for being above 75% HP, which will be almost all the time. Next up is Corruption, which will help increase our condition damage. Most builds will take Pact of Pain and Diabolic Inferno and go all in on damage. But since this is an open world build, we're going to be taking Demonic Resistance and Fiendish Tenacity instead. These will reduce our total damage taken by 20% and heal us every single second, as long as we have the resistance buff active, which, you guessed it, will be all the time. That brings us to our elite spec, Herald, which is all about boons and making the most out of them. Shared Empowerment will effectively double the rate at which we're generating might, and Elevated Compassion will grant us permanent quickness as long as we're maintaining at least 6 pips of upkeep. This Grandmaster trait also grants us some concentration and free healing on top. Now, most builds will recommend taking Elder's Respite for the extra healing and take care of movement speed with swiftness, possibly in combination with a Relic of Speed. We are going to be taking Rising Momentum instead, which will give us a speed boost that is unaffected by combat. And if you have the Executioner's Axe toy or the Troya Piñata tonic, combining this trait with either of those will let you move around the world at mount speed as long as you're not in combat. As you probably know, Revenants do not get to choose their individual utility skills. Instead, they get to pick legends which come with a predefined set of skills. For our general setup, we want Glint for the access to boons and Malix for its incredible elite skill. If all you're doing is gathering and you're not focusing on combat, it pays to swap Malix for Shiro instead. Impossible odds will also cost 6 pips of upkeep without the risk of accidentally putting you in combat, unlike the Malix elite. Revenants are one of those professions that can make use of everything Celestial Gear has to offer. So this will be our set of choice. In the footage, I'm combining these stats with the Rune of the Trapper, which is a good all-purpose rune that increases our damage. If you don't have a Celestial set, but you do have Viper's Gear for instance content, you'll do more than fine as well. Just keep in mind you'll be less resilient and heal for slightly less. The latest balance patch also did something incredible for all Revenant specs. Shortbow skills were reworked to always pierce enemies without having to commit to Renegade. So we're going to be taking advantage of that and run a shortbow with the Sigils of Torment and Geomancy as our main set. If the Sigil of Torment proves to be too costly, you can swap it with the much cheaper Sigil of Earth instead. And when you take a look at the Sigil of Geomancy, you'll notice that it says you need to weapon swap for its effect to trigger. What it doesn't mention, and this is intended by ArenaNet, is that it also activates when you're swapping Legends, which will be doing every 9 seconds and lines up perfectly with the Sigil's internal cooldown. Personally, I choose to bring a staff as my second weapon with the sigils of paralyzation and cleansing. But you could also opt for the more damage focused mace axe combination instead with the same sigils as on your shortbow. As for the relic, you can bring whatever you want. In the footage, I'm using the relic of the fractal which helps with overall damage. But if you want to, let's say, increase your passive healing to near 10% of your max HP per second, then the relic of Duena would be the way to go. Or if you'd like some extra strike damage to take down enemies faster, the relic of the brawler will do that for you. Or if you simply want a cool effect every time you press your elite skill, then the relic of Cirrus can be an enticing option. The build's playstyle is rather simple. All you want to do is maintain at least 6 pips of upkeep so that you can keep pulsing quickness. Do not underestimate this boon by the way, as it will let you attack 50% faster in combat, which in itself is massive, but it will also help you gather faster. In Glint, you have multiple ways of achieving this. 
I generally like to enable all three utility skills and the healing skill, which is exactly 6 pips and will grant you regen, fury, might and swiftness on top. If you're fighting a particularly deadly enemy, it pays to mix in your elite skill, which will pulse protection and lower the damage you take. And your healing skill's active component, infusing light, is one of the strongest in the game. It will heal you for a rather low amount of HP, but it will also invert all incoming damage to healing for 3 seconds, which means that you can absorb potentially deadly attacks and be healed to full instead. Every 9 seconds you're going to want to swap legends, and with the second being Malix, all you want to do is activate your elite skill as soon as possible. This conveniently costs 6 pips of upkeep, helping you maintain quickness and your movement speed boost bonus while pulsing torment around you at the same time. It is easy to overlook the other skills when you're attuned to Malix, but using them properly will take this build to the next level. Your healing skill will heal you for a massive amount and you have a targeted jump that will let you traverse terrain faster and group enemies around you when you land, as well as a skill that removes boons from enemies and one that will grant you both resolution and resistance. The build as presented does have one glaring weakness. I intentionally focused on everything but condition cleansing, and that is because resistance, which will be active almost permanently, will make damaging conditions ineffective against us, and rising momentum will let us ignore the effects of being crippled or slowed down. That means that in combat I'm really not all that bothered by any condition that could be affecting me, and when I want to cleanse them off to mount up or when I'm gathering, I swap to my staff which can cleanse conditions with its fourth skill. If conditions do bother you, you could swap Invocation's Rising Tide to Cleansing Channel. This will lower your damage by 10%, but will let you cleanse a condition every time you swap legends. You can then further enhance its effect by using Relic of Antitoxin to remove an additional one. Since making this build, I've been taking it literally everywhere in the open world, from gathering runs to soloing champions and bounties to meta events. And it's been a real joy. If you have any questions, make sure you ask them down below, or better yet, join our Discord, which is growing at a rapid pace and where I post additional tips and tricks. And you know what to do by now. Like, comment and subscribe.